creates hidden hunger. And it's a lot of the work has been done by one of the doctors we deal with, Dr. Paul Clayton, who has written a very, very good book. It's the best book I've ever read on nutrition. It's called Health Defense. And what he says here about the gap in our nutritionist, nutritional status, you can read for yourself, of course. But he, he really says that, because there's nutritional gap, this is why we're seeing diseases that used to affect just elderly people now also affecting young people. Um, and that scientists tend to overlook the whole picture, the big picture, the whole thing, because we've got this idea that has come about called the magic bullet. One thing that's going to do the job. Give me this pill, I'll take this pill, it'll do the job. Nature's not like that. Nature isn't one thing in isolation, it's the whole picture. That's why food is complex, that's why there's hundreds of thousands of associated food factors, phytonutrients, in addition to all the different vitamins and minerals that we need to function properly. Um, one thing where I'm going to start is that if you change, I'll be bold enough I suppose to say that, for all I know you may follow this, if you adopt a diet of up to four pints of water a day, lots of fruit, lots of veg, I was saying to someone um, during the break, I probably get 10 portions a day. Um, I haven't eaten anything with legs, i.e. meat, for what well, since, since I was a boy. Um, fruit and veg and water forms the majority of my diet. And I also said to someone that we reversed. If you think back to the war years, we kind of did 60% minimum of veg and fruit. Now, it's somewhere less than 40. And I went through a chart with them showing how the, the nutrients, there's zero antioxidants <coughs> in a meat-rich diet, a processed-rich diet like, like that. And it's the antioxidants that you need to determine your health and status and well-being. Also, lots of saturated fats and all sorts of other things as well. And in a vegetable diet, you can get between double and ten times the minerals that you would get in a meat-rich diet, a dairy-rich one. So if you can adopt fruit and veg and water, and... Even the American Medical Association recommends that everybody takes, whether they're ill or not, takes a good multivitamin and mineral a day, which will bridge that nutrition gap. This is what you can look forward to. Increased energy, increased libido, improved sleep, hours and quality, a greater enthusiasm for life, improvement in physical and emotional symptoms, Reduced body mass index, fewer episodes of acute illness, improved visual acuity, improved mental acuity, your memory, reduced blood, blood pressure if it was high, and also if it was high, reduced cholesterol. So that's what one can look forward to. I mentioned the Stone Age diet what's called the Paleolithic diet, <coughs> a booklet called What Constitutes a Good Diet for Those Concerned About Western Diseases. And the Paleolithic era was a period of about two and a half million years of duration that ended about 10,000 years ago with the development of agriculture. And the evidence seems to show <coughs> That's the sort of diet that we should be going back to before we moved away. Because although the mind can alter, the body is still stuck in the Stone Age. And in here, there is lists of encouraged foods 
and recommended foods and those that it says should be either eaten in moderation or avoided. So that's a good thing to look at. There's also other diets. You may have heard of them like the acid alkali diet. We should eat uh, alkali foods so that we are <coughs> not acidic. And believe it or not, grains, flesh, beans, nuts and cheese are all acid. Alkali, fruit and veg. So even though we're coming from a different angle, that's where we should be. So I'm going to look at some key nutrients and what they can do for you. And this um, list that I drew up that many of you have uh, got. First of all, we're, we're kind of doing A, a to uh, Z. Common ailments, what you can do to help yourself. Take an antibiotics. The key is in the word. Anti against bio life. You take an antibiotic for a very good reason, and I'm not against them, because it does a job. Unfortunately, it has side effects. A side effect, if you think about it, is something that actually isn't very good for you. But it's what we learn to live with, and it's termed side effect because it sounds less harmful. But antibiotics will kill a lot of your gut bacteria. So, replenish with, with, with probiotics. It used to be that the early pioneers found in the gut somewhere in the, the range of 800 different species of probiotics weighing on average two pounds. Now, with our modern processed food diets, there's only a few ounces. And this is why it gets out of balance. And you see probiotics advertised drink this particular yogurt drink, say Yakov or whatever. But you get millions and millions and billions more live probiotics cells in a single little capsule rather than taking a yogurt drink each, each day. So I really recommend probiotics. Many ailments can actually be addressed by that. Going on summer holidays? Get oh, summer. Get bitten by mosquitoes. They don't like B vitamins. They really don't. You can either take a B complex or brewer's yeast. Brewer's yeast is rich in B vitamins and it gives off an aroma that we can't detect. But there's no end of evidence that shows that mosquitoes don't like that aroma. I've been in the Indian jungle and I haven't taken anything. And there's been people around me being bitten. I've had my B vitamins, my brewer's yeast, no bites. Um, I'm briefly going to mention cancer because of our involvement with the Bristol Cancer Help Centre. And there's a lot of information coming out at the moment about um, a substance called beta-glucans. Beta-glucans is the most astonishing thing. It comes from the cell wall of a yeast. It is, I suppose one day it would be classified as a vitamin. We've discovered it fairly recently. When we introduced it at Nature's Own to our sister company, Cytoplan, that deals with practitioners, they got such incredible results that within a year, it was the top selling product. There is a wealth of evidence to show that beta-glucans is fantastic for the immune system. It can also, of course, by boosting the immune system, it can help with things like allergies. So that's something that is a good baseline. Because we live in an environment that has got pollution around us, unseen, and all sorts of other things, and most of us are kind of below par, beta-glucans is very, very good, and I recommend it highly. At the Bristol Cancer Help Centre, they used to recommend the antioxidants, vitamins A, C, E, the two minerals, zinc and selenium. Let me tell you a bit about selenium. In the 1990s, the government wondered why people in North Norfolk live much longer than anywhere else in the UK on average. The incidence of people being 75 or over was three times anywhere else. They investigated and it eventually came down 
to the fact that it was the only area in the UK with any selenium in the soil. You see, nature does not distribute her wares evenly. You know, you've got the gold mines in South Africa or wherever, coal occurs at certain places. Everything is not everywhere, it's random. And that's why in the UK there's no selenium in the soil, it's just a bit up in North Norfolk. So selenium is a very, very good thing to uh, take. It will process, uh, gets your immune system strengthened and gets rid of those free radicals. Qatar, all right, if you're suffering from Qatar. Mucus, dairy free, that's a good step. Um, I mentioned earlier about how when you take dairy products, and we kind of over, overdo do those, um, the, the body produces mucus, not just in the, the nose, in the gut, everywhere. And so if you want to get rid of Qatar, that's what you do. Two other things that can help are vitamin C and garlic. Poor circulation, and this perhaps happens to us either as a product of our genes or as we get older. Vitamin E is excellent for that. Because what vitamin E does is it gets into the bloodstream and it circulates. It purifies the blood. It oxygenates the blood. And it goes round and it cleanses the blood so the circulation improves. In this, it is also aided by something called bioflavonoids. When I was a lad and I wanted to eat an orange, my dear old grand used to say to me, you've got to eat the pith as well. Didn't want to do that. But nature isn't daft. Vitamin C is in the orange juice. But this thing called bio, as in bio, life, flavonoids, the flavone family, that's in the pith. The two work together. Not only do they help each other be absorbed, but bioflavonoids, also known as vitamin P, You'll see it on good quality vitamin C's. You'll see the, on the jar, it'll say vitamin C, X amount, bioflavonoids, so and so. Bioflavonoids strengthens the capillaries. It is excellent. Colds and flu-like symptoms. Should I say man flu? Well, the antioxidants, particularly vitamin C, that will really be very beneficial. Wealth of evidence. Vitamin C is something that really is, you could call it nature's antibiotic. It's, it's needed by every cell. It goes into the cell and it produces interferon. And that is tremendous because it strengthens it and acts as a watchdog. Constipation. Large result of Western diet and the foods that we eat. Three things that can really help there. A look at the diet, you get plenty of roughage, what you need and bulk in vegetables and fruits. Water will help rehydrate and will help peristalsis, which is the action of pushing stuff through the body. And something called aloe vera. It's a plant. Aloe is mentioned in the Bible. It's called bitter aloe. The bitter part is a substance just under the skin. And when they take the aloe plant now, they fill it back out, and so you just get all the goodness. It's rich in nutrients, but the kind of aloe to have is called inner leaf rather than whole leaf. Whole leaf is really good for antioxidants. Inner leaf is good for inflammation and gentle on the stomach. Cramps. Now, cramps is a very common thing, and that's caused by a lack of magnesium in the body. That's why drinkers start to shake, because they've used all the magnesium. Why, when we were kids and we ran and we got the stitch, we'd used all the magnesium. When you go to bed at night, this is what happens to a lot of people, they lie in bed and they get the cramps. You take a magnesium tablet, and remember that in food, I said you'd have to eat something like 10 pounds of spinach to get 50 milligrams of magnesium. Take the shortcut. 
get a good magnesium, preferably a food form magnesium tablet, a food state or a whole food, and cramps will go. Also, B vitamins need, need magnesium for ab absorption. Depression. We're getting into B complex territory here. The B vitamins are the vitamin family that you will notice quicker than anything else having an effect in your body. Very often, within two weeks, you will find that you will feel an improvement in your well-being. During the Second World War, the 8th Army came back from its desert campaign and its nerve ends were literally frayed because they'd had insufficient B vitamins. So B vitamins are a family, there's B1, B2, B3. This is because they thought it was one thing. Then they realized that it was an amalgam, a compound of all different things. So there's up to about eight or nine different B vitamins and have different numbers. And they are a family, they all work together. If you're gonna take one in isolation, for example, <coughs> touching on schizophrenia, they found that B3 was particularly good for schizophrenics. But you don't take it in isolation, you might take extra, but you would take the whole complex. So a B complex is something that, I'll, I'll come back to it, you will notice, that, notice this, this difference in literally, certainly, under a month. Also for depression, the thing called puffers or polyunsaturated fatty acids, that is the omega-3 oils. We used to have a ratio, we need these omega oils from fish or perhaps from linseeds, but we used to have a ratio of one to one. But our modern diet, it's one part omega-3 to 20 parts omega-6. And we need to get that balance. So there's a wealth of evidence emerging now that everybody would benefit from taking fish oils. You can take it in capsules just in case you don't really like the taste of the oil. And we're coming on to something called krill oil. Krill, as you know, is a very small animal um, that um, is in the Antarctic and whales feed on. Krill oil is actually in a form the essential fatty acids there are in a form that the body can absorb and utilize much better and much easier than in fish oil. And there's been evidence emerging that things like the heart will benefit enormously, the brain will also benefit from taking fish oils. I know they're doing trials with children in various schools. So they found that um, the, the, the Eskimos, although they had a fatty diet, as I was saying to someone in the, the uh, break, they thought, well, why don't they have heart disease? It was because they get lots of fish oil, lots of omega-3s. Diabetes. Okay, generally late onset. Diabetes is something that you can do something about. And there is a mineral called chromium. When we, we used to get chromium in our diet, but the main source of chromium used to be in flour. Because we've changed the kinds of wheat that we grow, and also because it's milled, 98% of the chromium that we used to get is milled out and gone. And we all go around chromium deficient. It balances out blood sugar levels. It can help in weight loss because it reduces sugar craving. Digestive system. The function of B vitamins is twofold. The nerves, the mind, and the absorption of food values. I'm putting this very simply. So that can help for the digestive system. Again, that can be added and supplemented by the inner leaf aloe vera and probiotics. 
energy. I, I always say this. Does anyone here not want more energy? Put your hand up. We all want more energy. Okay. Water is a key because we're so bad at knowing we are dehydrated. Most of us go around in a state of permanent dehydration. Even just breathing in and out, you lose up to two full glasses of water a day that, that way. Your B complex, Siberian ginseng, not Korean, Siberian, because it's got more nutrients and it's more gentler acting, so that can give you more energy, and our old friend, magnesium. Fungal infections and things like thrush, probiotics can really be helpful. Immune system, those antioxidants that I spoke about earlier, A, C, E, um, zinc and selenium. Irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. This is a Western disease and is said to affect about one in four or one in five of the population. It assumes different forms. It's called irritable bowel syndrome. You know, we don't like to talk about what goes on down there. There are different reasons for IBS. Partly diet, <coughs> partly stress, lifestyle choices. There are things that one can do. I mean, I, I actually give a full talk on that. There's a doctor in North London who has the only government-funded IBS self-help self group, and I go and talk there about once every year. Um, so you can have water, because that's soothing. Inner leaf aloe, soothe. Probiotic, repopulate the gut. B vitamins, that could be helpful. And diet. As we get older, it's more difficult to digest food. So you have to take more care with your stomach, with your bowel. But the answer lies in getting back to nature. And if you can, good steamed veg can be very, very beneficial for that. Joints. There's a really good booklet here on um, joints and arthritis. And glucosamine is one of the things, of course, now it used to be glucosamine sulfate, but the sulfate form is not, not as good long term for the body as the hydrochloride form. So if you're going to take glucosamine long term, and there's a wealth of evidence to show it works, get the hydrochloride form. Um, osteoporosis. Well, if you have osteoporosis, the last thing you want to do is load yourself up with lots and lots of calcium. The booklet. Okay. First of all, you're going to need vitamin C because it's an essential component in collagen formation and bone growth. Vitamin D, which is needed for the uptake of the calcium, and our vitamin D status declines with age. Vitamin K, which is identified in bone cartilage, etc. Magnesium. You cannot take calcium without having magnesium in the body. Between 55 and 60% of magnesium is found in the bone and forms a major structural part. The flavonoids and another generation of nutrients coming along called the carotenoids. When I started, ladies and gentlemen, in 1980, nutrition was so simple. There was hardly anything on the market, only a few things. It has grown exponentially, and I tell you, it's really difficult to keep up because the researchers out there are coming up with new things at such a rate of knots. You know that from looking at your daily paper. The omega oils, again, important to take for osteoporosis. Also B6, the two minerals, boron and molybdenum. <coughs> Copper, manganese, phosphorus. It's a whole wealth. So generally, <coughs> you would get 
instead of going into a health food store and asking for a calcium, you would go in and you would buy a bone formula. Okay, that is what I really recommend. Stress. And I always say to people, anyone here not suffer from stress, put your hand up. We all suffer from stress. It's kind of part of life. But it varies, doesn't it? I mean, I know someone that gets stressed by whether they should post a letter first class or second class. Stress to me is, if I can see it objectively, and maybe that's the key, is you're a Spitfire pilot, but you've got two measure spits on your tail, and you're on fire, and your parachutes burn. I mean, that's stress. But we all suffer from stress, and this is partly down to the society that we inhabit. The human race, we make it up as we go along. This is where we are in our evolutionary journey. This is the society that we have, for better or worse, we've got to make the best of it. All we can do is try and slot in somewhere that reduces our stress levels. Or to cope with stress in other ways, maybe through things like meditation. But the thing that can really help on a physical level is our old friend B complex. You want to be able to cope with stress, you bump those B complex vitamins and you will notice a difference. You really will. Want a better quality skin? Water. Simple as that. Water. Yes, sure, vitamin E can help, but by and large, water is very good. Ulcers, vitamins B and vitamin C. Simple as that. That was my kind of brief romp through. Let's look at some other, other things as well. Here's a clipping from our old friend, the Daily Mail. It says, taking one vitamin B pill a day from middle age could protect your memory as you grow older and even ward off Alzheimer's, British researchers say. Pensioners who took high doses of the vitamin once a day for two years did 70% better on a simple memory test than those who did not. The Oxford University scientists say the pill prevents the memory lapses that can be a precursor to dementia. They also found it cut brain shrinkage linked to memory loss by up to 500%. That's B complex. One of the components of B complex is a very, very lesser known B vitamin or para B vitamin as it's called, called choline. Choline is the main ingredient in something called lecithin. Lecithin granules, very good for you. Uh, you can get them from the health food store. They help to metabolize the fats in your body, the bad fats, and get rid of them. They contain choline, and you can buy choline, and it's in the B complex. It lines the myelin sheath in the brain, and the large part of the brain is composed of choline, and helps the neurotransmitters to work better. Okay. Now. come back to beta-glucans for a moment because I can't overemphasize the importance of this. We have two immune systems. The one we're born with and the one that we inhabit as we get older and we get all the various childhood diseases and as we go through life we get another thing hit us and our body acclimatizes to that. What beta-glucans does, it puts your innate not the one you are born, not the one that you gather about you, the one that you're born with, it puts it like on guard. So anti-infection, anti-allergy, can ward off parasitic infections, and I've written down that, that word, cancer, because it's not me saying it, it's a wealth of evidence that shows that beta glucans can be very good for that. I'll talk a little bit about the essential fatty acids again. Final 
here in my hand. It's estimated that 85% or more of people in the Western world are deficient in omega-3 acids. And we get far too much of the omega-6s. It says here that an adequate daily intake of essential fatty acids is essential to maintain a healthy heart. Fish oils are especially important for diabetics who have an increased risk of heart disease. Fish oils help maintain the elasticity of artery walls, prevent blood clotting, reduce blood pressure, and stabilize heart rhythm. Booklets here, please help yourself. <coughs> okay. A little bit about weight loss. The information I'm now going to give you, I got from, of all things, the money program. And I was so stunned I wrote it down. <coughs> Obesity costs 15 billion pounds per annum in the UK. This has doubled in the last decade. We eat more sugar than a wheat. The cost of obesity to us is more than the effects of smoking. Some cereals contain 50% sugar. The generation that's coming up now, for the first time in history, will not live as long as its parents. Type 2 diabetes is on the rise. What's happened is that the children today eat probably less than a third of the fruit and veg that their grandparents did. The answer, simple. You go away from all these sugary things. The mayor of New York banned the selling of jumbo Coca-Colas because in each one, there was 26 spoonfuls of sugar. There you can go for lecithin, GTF chromium, vitamin D, low glycemic index foods, and there's information about glycemic index here as well. So that's the thing to go with. I want to talk about vitamin D because when I started, you know, vitamin D, no one ever thought about it. And yet now, it's absolutely huge. There's a book called The Vitamin D Cure. Symptoms, vitamin D deficiency. Well, gosh, where do I stop? Fatigue, joint pain, muscle pain, chronic pain, uncontrolled weight gain, high blood pressure, poor concentration of memory, headaches, bowel problems, depression, fibromyalgia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, arthritis, osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, blah, blah, blah. You get the picture? Okay. Right. <clears throat> osteoporosis, the myth, a disease of aging that begins after menopause. No, osteoporosis is a disease that begins before birth and in childhood with vitamin D deficiency, dietary imbalance and lack of exercise. The failure to attain peak bone mass in early adult life leads to osteoporosis as an older adult. Obesity, the myth, is simply taking too many calories and not burning enough calories. Obesity is in fact a disease of inadequate nutrition. We eat until we satisfy our nutritional needs, that is, our hunger. With lean meat and fresh produce, we can do this in smaller calorific packages than with grains and dairy. There's a lot of information in here. Um, it's a good book if you can get it. It talks about uh, vitamin D in quite a lot of detail, so... Right also helpful for rheumatoid arthritis. Here we go. A 2010 study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that subjects with healthy vitamin D levels lost about twice as much weight 
as those with the lowest levels. The higher the vitamin D levels before starting a diet, the more successful the weight loss results. Vitamin D works with calcium to help reduce cortisol production, and that is the stress hormone that causes you to store more fat. Adequate levels of vitamin D in the blood prompt fat cells to slow down fat storage. Vitamin D triggers the body to, re to release more leptin, the hormone that tells the brain you're no longer hungry. Low vitamin D levels lead to insulin resistance, a major obesity factor. And we are recommended far higher doses of vitamin D than the so-called RDAs. Again, I was talking with some about that in the, the break. RDAs vary from country to country. I hear that vitamin D is also a good high level of vitamin D, apart from the heart, also plays a role in cancer. Um, probiotics I'm going to come back to for a moment. Remember, your body isn't just straight through. Your small intestine is 20 feet long, four times the area of your skin. In fact, if you were able to smooth it all out, it's the area of a football pitch. You, it's important to put the probiotics in, and I think if I was to say to people that the summary, the things that you can do, apart from the fruit, veg, and water, is to take a good multivitamin and mineral, preferably a food form, because the body will recognize it. Probiotics to repopulate the gut, fish oils, you can think about vitamin D, but beta glucans, I would say that that's a very important thing as well. I get lots of bits of information from all over the place, and I can't resist bringing them along and sort of referring to them. This is a trial that happened in Australia. In the research produced by the Harvard University's landmark nurses' health study of 78,000 women, surveyed over a 12-year period, those who consumed the most dairy products were found to break the most bones. This is the nutritionist perhaps the best-known nutritionist in the UK, Patrick Holford, who's a man that really does know what he's talking about. And he poses the question, who benefits from a healthy nation? I'll just read you a, um, a little bit. This is in my trade journal. Last month, the UK's biggest drug firm, GSK, pleaded guilty to criminal charges relating to antidepressant and diabetes drug frauds and agreed to pay $3 billion. That brings total fines in the US against Big Pharma to almost $14 billion. <clears throat> I highlighted in yellow, and of course I can't see the yellow in this light. <laughs> it's the cameras. He says, imagine what we could do with $3 billion. If any food with more than 10% of calories of sugar was taxed, just like alcohol and cigarettes and a warning put on the label, that would be another source of revenue to fuel a health revolution. As a starter, you could give everyone free vitamin C instead of statins. Just think how many less sick days and increased productivity that would deliver. On top of lowering blood sugar, cholesterol and blood pressure. Why is the UK government so chicken on health policy? With a million employees in the NHS, no politician wants to touch this sacred and very expensive cow. What would it take to turn the corner and turn this fastest growing, failing national disease service into a real beacon of light? 
a real rational health service with prevention at the core. We need to fight against in industries that are making us fat and keeping us sick. Which kind of comes full circle because when the health service started out, it's become something that perhaps it was never designed to be. When you think about it, it employs a million people. And we're still getting sicker. We're not getting to 120 years in good health. When I went for my pension plan, the chap said, what pills are you taking? I said, oh, I take multivitamin, I take vitamin B, vitamin C. No, 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 what drugs do you take? I said, well, I don't. He said, well, I'm awfully sorry, but your pension's not going to be very good then. Because if you took lots and lots of drugs, your projected life would be short, and therefore you'd get a good pension. <laughs> and apparently, to reach my age, 66, and not take any drugs, is something that's comparatively unusual. Well, I don't know what to say about that, but I can certainly say that it's, it's really... Um, I believe a little what you fancy does you good. I try and follow this as a kind of main thing. But yeah, I'll have a glass of wine. I'll have a piece of chocolate. It's just that it doesn't dominate my diet. Okay, what I'd like to do is to throw it open for questions, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. foods, 500 calories, animal-based foods, 500 calories. Gives a list of nutrients. So what I'll do is, I'll go through some of them and just tell you. Okay? Plant-based foods, cholesterol levels, zero. Animal, 137 milligrams. Fat, plant, 4,000 milligrams. Animal-based foods, 36,000. Uh, dietary fibre, plant-based, 31,000 milligrams. Animal-based, sweet zero. Vitamin C, from plants, 293 milligrams. From animal-based, 4 milligrams. Iron, from plants, 20 milligrams. From animal-based, 2. Magnesium, from plants, 548 milligrams from animal waste, a mere 51. <coughs> There's the case. <coughs> I, what I've tried to do this evening is a kind of introduction and to share with you something that I obviously, obviously feel very passionately about. When I started doing this back in the early 80s, it was still, you know, it was still considered cranky. I mean, the idea of organic food, you know, hadn't even surfaced back in the 1960s. But now organic food's gaining momentum. We're moving away from this idea that we can kind of conquer nature and realise that we have to work in harmony with nature. And my perspective is, until the soil is healed, we have to bridge the nutrition gap with those essential vitamins and minerals that are no longer in our diet, no matter how well we eat. And if you look at the book that's it's ex explained there, which is why vitamins and minerals, um, 
food form, especially as a, a pill, a tablet, will bridge that nutrition gap until we heal the soil. Then I can retire and be a very happy man. Thank you all very much.